Good morning. Good morning. I have to share with you something so exciting that happened to me this morning. I was up early before the sun came up, and I got up, went into my kitchen, which you know is right here, and it faces, the window faces out to the big, to all the forest. And I went to fill up my coffee cup, and I looked out, and I didn't have my glasses on, so I ran back and got my glasses. There was a whole herd of elk. Oh, my gosh. So I got some pictures, and I could not get the big bull. He was running back and forth, because I think he, he sensed the movement from the house. But what a great way to start off the day, isn't it? Especially when we are starting a new series in our lectionary. Last week we heard the creation story, and this week we're going to talk about the mysteries of the cosmos and just the mystery of elk showing up. I have not seen them here since we've lived there. So anyway, it was a wonderful way to start the day. I hope you, your morning was off to a wonderful start as well. Uh, this morning, after worship, we are going to be having a meeting for any families who have their children involved in any of our youth ministry programs, from uh, the, all the Spark families, confirmation families, middle school families, high school families, and significant volunteers. So if you are here and able to stay, it'll probably be like a 15-20 minute meeting, um, just to give you some information about what's happening on Wednesday nights. And so if you have a child that's involved in that or a grandchild and they're not here today, if you would please stay for that very important meeting, that would be fantastic. As many of you know, Darren and I are going to be leaving for vacation on Wednesday, and we will be gone a full week, and we're going to visit our son in Kodiak, Alaska, and our new daughter-in-law, so we're really excited to go spend some time with him, and we have amazing volunteers who have agreed to make sure everything goes smoothly while I'm gone. But as you know, we can always use um, more, just more energy, more excitement, um, every single Wednesday night, that's always the night that we are excited to have all of you come. And this, one of the things we want to remind you is that the meal before worship on Wednesday nights, you are welcome to join in, because that's a great way for you to interact with the youth who have been participating in the Wednesday night programming. So come for a meal um, between 5.15 and, and 5.45 or so, and then the worship service is at 6, and then the programming for the bigger kids happens after worship. So please get involved with our youth and join us on Wednesday nights. A few other things that are happening this month that I wanted to bring your attention to. You maybe saw them in the newsletter, but you maybe have forgotten about it. We are going to be having starting a grief support group, sharing our grief together. And that's going to be happening on the last Monday of every month, once a month. And it'll happen at 10 a.m. and again at 6 p.m. So that way we can reach anybody who has great and significant loss in your life ever. This is not just for people who have, are experiencing grief from the last year, but if you still need to talk to people about the ways that you need community during times of grief, this might be an opportunity to come and, and receive some support. Also, starting the Thursday after I get back, we are going to be gathering in the fireside room, and we're going to be having a conversation called Real Talk. And these conversations are meant to bring up some conversations that maybe we don't get to have in our everyday lives because we're so busy and we, how are you, which is just another way of saying hello. We don't ever really get to answer the question, how are you? Because there's a lot going on in the world that you might want to talk about in a Christian setting. And that is one that I am asking you to sign up for just to make sure that I have enough materials and that the space that we have is big enough. So there will be a sign-up sheet set out on the welcome table for the Real Talk conversations on Thursday night that will start at 6.30. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> some things start at 6, some things starts at 6.30. And then if you put your email on there too, I can email you and remind you that we're going to be having that conversation. So as always, there's a lot of really wonderful ways for you to participate and get involved in the ministries of Custer Luther Fellowship. But now is the time for you to just put all that busyness down for a moment. To have a moment between you and God to prepare your heart and your mind so that you can fully encounter the presence of the Holy Spirit among us this morning. And so we take a moment to just take a deep breath and prepare for worship.
We gather this morning for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. Praise God, who meets us in this holy house. God's promises are sure. Praise God, who fills us with all good things. God's promises are sure. Praise God, who knows our needs and lovingly meets them. God's promises are sure. We welcome each other to worship in the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, who walks with us and promises to be with us every step of our lives. This morning we are going to be using the liturgy from Remembering the Promise. And these, this is a liturgy that I know this congregation has used many times. And I would like us to focus on the word promise this morning. And so we confess our sins before God and one another. We have not loved you with all of our hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not responded to our promise. We have put up walls to keep people at a distance. We have failed to respond when someone was hurting. We have not responded to our promise. We are captured by our desire for material wealth. We forget those who do not have food or shelter. We have not responded to our promise. We have used the gifts for creation. We destroy the beauty of ignorance and greed. We have not responded to our promise. We fail to respond to your call to do justice. We seek only comfort for ourselves. We have not responded to your promise.
all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Creator, you, you have formed us in your own image and have promised to be with us forever. Open our hearts to your gentle presence so that we may be guided to do your will in the world. Amen. You may be seated. Do we have any children who would like to come up for the children's service? She's always the one who comes up with me. You can sit here right beside me. So, have you ever made a promise to anybody? Is it still a thing when you make promises with your friends to do a pinky promise? Yeah, like this? A pinky promise you, right? So, I used to do that when I was a kid too. So there are just some things that just keep going on, right? Why do you think you're pinky? Just because it goes together, pinky promise? I really don't have an answer for that. I just wonder if it's because they both start with the letter P, pinky promise. Because you can't say, like, thumb promise. <laughs> but a pinky promise, when you make that with a friend, is supposed to really mean something, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of those, like, you can say, I promise this, I promise that. But when you hold that pinky up, you say, pinky promise? That means something, right? Well, if you are baptized in this church, whether you are an infant or you are 110 years old, when you come here to be baptized, this congregation, when they witness your baptism, make a promise to you. Did you know that? We as a congregation promise anybody who is baptized here to be there for you as you grow in your faith. Did you all know that you made a pinky promise to this beautiful child when she was baptized? Believe it or not, when, that, when you said, we will, with God's help, after a child is baptized, that's your pinky promise to the children of this congregation or to any of the baptized people of this congregation. That we are here to support each other in our faith journeys. And we're here to remind each other that this light that pours in us when we are created, that we reflect the image of God. So it's not just that the image of God is on us. We reflect that image to the world. But if our light gets dim, sometimes it's hard to reflect that image. So my pinky promise to you as your pastor, and their pinky promise to each other, believe it or not, this is not just about the children, this is a promise you make to each other as baptized people, is that we will love and support each other and never let us forget that Christ's light is right inside of us. And that as we come to worship and we hear those words and we, we remember this promise that God made to us, we also make a promise to each other to try to help support each other to let our lights shine. So you also get to make a pinky promise to everybody else out here too. You get to help them let their light shine. Can you do that? And you do it anyway. And you lit those candles so well, by the way. So let's pray. We thank you, God, for the light that you have put into each and every one of us. And we do indeed ask that you help us to let our lights shine. So that even when we are worried or anxious, that we know that we have the light of your love within us. In every single child that is present here today. No matter how old they are. Amen. Amen. And now please stand for the gospel affirmation. affirmation. Oh, sorry, we don't have a gospel affirmation. We have a reading. You may be seated. <laughs> Those elk just got me all messed up this morning. Sorry about that. Go ahead. The scripture this morning is from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid. Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, 
if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall be your descendants. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned him to him as righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now they stand. to be my church. 
It's not our job. It's our work. It's what we do together to remember the promise of God's powerful spirit to continue to raise people up to proclaim the goodness of God. Now Abraham and Sarah, before he was Abraham, he was Abram and Sarah, had been given a promise in the 12th chapter of Genesis. This promise that they would have many descendants, that they would be a strong family and a strong community. And even though it's only three chapters that pass, it's years and years and years. And Abram says, what about this promise, God? I don't have a child to pass on anything to. How can I have all these descendants and all of this promise that you've given to me when we don't have a child? And you know the rest of the story, right? The, God, the, the angel appeared to Sarah and said, you know, you're, I know you're about 100 years old, but guess what? You're going to have a baby. <laughs> and Sarah laughs, and Abram goes silent, and he, nobody can believe that this is actually going to be true. And it is unbelievable. It is a miracle. It is one of the miracles in the Bible that we read about this fact that God is, in fact, going to raise up leaders, raise up people to continue to share the promise and the love of God. And, and regardless of my doubt, my fear, my anxiety, God is so much more than all of that. I believe that God is stirring up in the young children their light, this light that they will take into the world and shine. I believe that God is stirring up leaders among you that are going to step forward to continue to tell people that they have the light of love within them. And that light can shine so far into the world for years and years to come, not just in our lifetime, but throughout the generations. And I know we've talked before about the fact that for the Hebrew people, they didn't really talk about heaven and eternal life in the way that we talk about it today. They talked about eternal life as in their legacy through their children and their children's children and their children's children. And so Abram was not wrong to say, I don't have a child of my own to pass on this legacy. How can you give me this promise of eternal life? And God said, trust me. Just trust me. When you hear the words faith or belief, I would like you to substitute the word trust. Do we trust God's promises to continue to raise up people to shine light into the world? After I made my confession and I turned back and I looked at the reflection of God, all of a sudden I felt redeemed. I felt relieved. And I remembered that this promise to make us a holy people for the sake of the world not for the sake of those of us under this roof. That is not why God calls us to follow Jesus. Not just for our sake, but for the sake of the world to know God's love. And so when we do make these promises to each other at, baptize, at baptism, we say we have these promises. If you, I won't have you open your books right now, but there will be a day that I do when we open them up and review the promises that we make on behalf of the children to bring them to the Lord's Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, to teach them about faith, to feed the hungry, to work for justice in the world. These are the promises that we give to the children that we will teach them. So that, as we go out into the world, we say it's, it's not about us. It's about the light of Christ in us that shines out into the world. I love to study the science of the solar system and of the galaxy and of the universe, but it hurts my head. <laughs> Does that happen for any of you? Like, I just, I talked about it last week when we were on, you know, I said we're driving through and it's hard to imagine that we are on this earth and the earth is spinning and moving around and then around us are all these other amazing things. When I say study, I really prefer just to go outside at night and look. <laughs> because my brain just simply cannot comprehend 
the cosmos. But what I do know is that when a star dies, it takes a long time for those of us on Earth to know that it has died. Because it takes a long time, because the light is still close to us. And it takes a long time for that light to disappear. And when I think about Abram looking up to the stars and God saying, your, descendant, your descendants will be more than the stars in the skies. Can you remember as a child laying out at night and trying to count the stars? Anybody else ever do that? If you've never done that, I challenge you. Or if it's been a while, go do it tonight if there's a clear sky. Go out and try to count the stars. And as you do so, think about the fact that this light that is in you, this light that is the image of the Creator, God, shines for the world to see when we remember our own baptism. When we remember that promise of that faith stirred up in us when we called upon the Holy Spirit to fill us. Every time we confess our sins, every time we say a prayer, every time we worship together, that flame is stirred up in us so that we can shine bright for the world to see not just us, but the light of love. And this light of love will extend into the future. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that the light of Custer Lutheran Fellowship and of all of the visitors here today, because we come together, we are not just one individual light. We are a light for the community to see what love looks like. We can be that for the world, not because of our own work, but because of God's promise. When Jesus had people questioning and testing and pushing back, wondering about, why do we need to follow you? That's what they were fighting about. He was like, we have Abraham. We have the promise of God. We don't need you, Jesus. And Jesus says, do you don't know the same God that I know? You can't just pull out the, Abra or the Abraham card. That's not going to last forever. It's God's promise that is going to last forever. And Jesus says, I will call people to share that promise. Even if you just want to stay stuck in the past, stuck in your ancient traditions and ways that are not meaningful for the future of the generations to come. So Abraham had to trust this promise of God and he had to wait. And he had to be patient. And that's not always easy for us, is it? To wait and be patient. In fact, I'm kind of sad to say that we might have to wait even until we after, after we die to see the fruits of the labor of this congregation. But what we can know is that our light will shine far into the future because we're together. When we try to do it alone, it's pretty daunting. But when we do this together and we can remember the promise that God gave to Abraham, and he said, this love is going to go from you clear into the future for all of your descendants. And think about if all of those descendants number more than the stars in the sky, how can a world not know the love of God? We can know the love of God when we let the light of love that was given to us from God shine into the world for all of the cosmos to see. And this is really good news. Amen. Amen. Please stand. We are going to sing this hymn through two times.
And now let us confess our faith together. We believe God is our Creator and has promised to love us always. We believe Jesus Christ, only God and fully human, is God's promise living among us. He experienced all the pain and joy and challenges of human life. God's forgiving love was revealed to us when Jesus suffered death on the cross. He came back to new life and has promised us new life in unity with God. We believe the Holy Spirit is God's promise, touching our spirits, guiding us, even through the darkest and difficult moments of our lives. We believe God is among us in the community, mysterious yet very real. God's promise to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Amen. We are going to be singing our response to the prayers of intercession today, and so when you hear the words, God in your mercy, then you will join in singing with us. And now, for the sake of the world, all who are in need, we bring our prayers before God.
you for doing this.
gives right to give our thanks and praise. We remember today the night that Jesus was betrayed, when he took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant, a new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And he pours out his spirit upon this cup and upon this bread and upon all of us, so that our spirit might be rekindled, so that we might reflect the love of Christ in our lives. And so we are bold to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are all now invited to come to this table, to this banquet. Everybody that is here is welcome to participate, so that we can indeed taste and see the Lord is good. As you come forward, you will be offered a wafer, and then you can dip your wafer either into the gold cup, which has wine, or the ceramic cup that has grape juice, and if you need to have a gluten-free option, there is a small dish that you can take your own uh, communion from that dish. And now, as a body of Christ, let your lights shine. You may be seated.
keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of promise, in response to your promise of life, we offer our life. In response to your promise of love, we offer our love. In response to your promises, we offer our gifts. Amen. Before I offer the benediction, I do want to make um, another announcement. I know you love this choir so much, and I do too. We all do. And we are hoping that some of you are getting excited about our jam session that is happening on the last Sunday of this month. On that Sunday, we're going to be gathering together, maybe learning a couple of new hymns. And just if you have played any instrument or you like to sing, even if you don't want to join the choir, this is not just a recruiting for the choir. This is a recruiting for all of us to have a time to enjoy music together. So um, please watch in the bulletins in the newsletter and join us for that jam session on the last Sunday of the month. That will be a lot of fun. Um, also, the sign-up sheet uh, for the, the garage sale is out on the Welcome Center, and you can start bringing your items to donate, not this week, next Sunday, and then that last week of the month, and then we will have a garage sale. So lots of exciting things going on here at the church. And now take another deep breath so that you can receive this benediction. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and give you peace. Go now and live, remembering God's promise to us. Amen. Amen.